this is a photo wrap title, TensorFlow for four points too. Uh, I'm Kaz, I am a developer advocate for Google Cloud team and working for evangelizing the technology and the products to the developers and uh, especially focusing on the machine learning and the uh, data processing products such as the BigQuery and TensorFlow. And today I'd like to go through the call lab titled uh, TensorFlow Points 2 and that code lab is available on this website. Maybe the easiest way is to uh, access the Google search and uh, search with the keywords such as code lab and poets too. And there's a the poet, uh, TensorFlow for poets code lab and TensorFlow poets 2 code lab. The poets 2 code lab is focusing on how you can optimize your model uh, for running the model on the mobile phones or smartphones. So please open the, uh, the poets 2 code lab page with your laptop if you have access. And I, in this code lab, I'd, I'd like to spend like the first 20 minutes or 30 minutes for going through the uh, concepts and the techniques we are going to try with the, the code lab before get, get started with code lab. So I will spend like a, yeah, 15 or 20 minutes to talking about what we are going to do. And then we will be starting the self-paced code lab uh, based on the code lab page. So let's get started with the uh, concepts before start using code labs. So this code lab is all about complexing the, complexing the TensorFlow models, the parameters and weights that consist the uh, neural network model to a smaller uh, binaries, uh, smaller data, so that you can run the TensorFlow model inside Android phone or iOS devices. Because the original neural network model is too big to run on smartphones. For example, the Inception version 3 model, that is the uh, popular uh, image recognition model uh, designed by Google, that has 91 megabyte of data uh, 91 one megabyte of data consists of the uh, parameters and, and uh, such as weights and biases inside the, the deep neural network model. So it's too big. If you really want to build your Android applications and uh, want to share the applications on the Play service as a production applications, nobody wants to, the no consumers don't, or Android users don't want to download 91 megabyte of the data while installing the URL applications. So you want to complex the model into less than 10 megabytes, I think. Yeah, or maybe at least 20 megabytes. And also TensorFlow binary itself is too big. It's 12 megabyte by default. And recently we announced a new uh, runtime called TensorFlow Lite, which is a topic of the another sessions I will have in this afternoon. But uh, usually, if you use the original, the ordinary TensorFlow binary, it, it takes 12 megabytes. So you have to compress the model and the binaries. And there are many different tips and tricks or techniques you can use to compress the model and the binaries to bring the technology into mobile phone. Uh, by the way, uh, when you are talking about TensorFlow or neural networks, uh, you have the two phases. One is the training phase to train the neural network model with your training data. And another is the inference or prediction or runtime phase uh, to use the model, the trained model. So we are all talking about the, uh, the latter part, to use the model. So we don't suppose uh, we are going to train the model on mobile phone because the mobile phone only has the ARM processor from Qualcomm. It's too uh, weak to do the, all the uh, calculation for the training. So we only think about the prediction or inference using the model rather than training the model on mobile phone. So if you suppose that we are only using the model only for the prediction or inference, then there are, there are many uh, tips and tricks you could use, such as freezing graph or transform graph. Because you, you are not doing training on the mobile, you can remove the, any unnecessary part of whole graph, you know, uh, especially for the, tra uh, the prediction or inference. And also you can use the quantization 
quantize weights and the calculations, and also you can use some techniques such as mapping. And in this code wrap, uh, we'll be using a part of those uh, techniques, especially freezing the graph and quantization, will be the main topic of this code wrap. Freezing graph, that is uh, just um, a conversion from the variables to constants. So in TensorFlow, we have many variables. For example, if you have weights and biases, usually people are using variables, variable objects, to define those weights because you want to train the model so that the, uh, the weights in the variables can you know, be uh, changed, modified uh, time to time by using GPUs or CPUs or TPUs. But once you have finished your training, you don't have to have those weights as variables because you are not going to train the model on the mobile, so you can convert those variables as constants in TensorFlow. So that is the one technique you can use to complex the model. And that, by using that, uh, that can, you can remove the, all the checkpoints as, and also you can improve the uh, routing times. Grass Transform tool is a tool provided in the TensorFlow distribution. So you can go to the TensorFlow slash tools slash grass transforms to uh, look at those, the tools to optimize your graph for running the, on the small devices, such as removing the, all the unnecessary operations for training, uh, removing the debug nodes, removing the, uh, the multiplication uh, for batch normalization. So things you don't use for prediction or inference. And quantizations. So, Quantization is a compression techniques for the, uh, the your weights and biases. And uh, the calculations used in the neural network is pretty simple. It's pretty simple. It's just a bunch of multiplication and adds between vectors and matrices. And the thing is that you don't have to have a very high precision on doing those the operations or calculations. Usually, uh, by default, maybe people are using like a 32-bit float or 64-bit double uh, floating point numbers to representing the weights and biases. But neural networks doesn't need it, actually. It's just the, each neurons inside new, new, uh, neural networks can get excited or not excited, activated or not activated. So it doesn't require any uh, very precise calculations. So, instead of using 32-bit floating point calculations, we could use much pure uh, precisions. For example, in case of the TPU version 1, uh, tensor processing unit version 1, we are using 8-bit uh, integer for representing weight for faster uh, inference on the TPU chip. And you can do the same thing on the mobile phones. Rather than using the 32-bit floating point for every calculation, you can compress the numbers, weights, and biases into 8-bit uh, integers. Still, the neural network works at certain decent uh, precision uh, accuracy. And TensorFlow provides the uh, primitives to support those quantized uh, numbers, values, and operations, such as D types for the quanti quantized numbers, Q into 8, Q into 32, or quantize the floating point values or quantize to quantize value or dequantize the value to the floating point numbers or operations that support the quantize values such as MATMAL or convolution pooling and activation. So in this code wrap we'll be using this technique too. Memory mapping could be another technique you can use for uh, increasing the performance of your applications. Rather than using the file I.O. to loading all the, uh, the parameters, you can use memory mapping. So, and now on the uh, TensorFlow repository, you can find uh, some sample codes for using this kind of the memory mapping techniques with your mobile phone application. And finally, you can compress the binary by selective registration. That means you can remove the, all the unnecessary binaries from the TensorFlow runtime and uh, you can use the only the required parts for the inference or predictions. And by doing so, you can compress the binary of TensorFlow from 12 megabytes to 1.5 megabytes uh, in, in case of the inception version 3. So, by 
applying all of those techniques, you can compress the model into much smaller uh, model. So now the compressed, in, compressed in, inception version 3 model can be uh, 23 megabyte for its weights and biases, and binary can be 1.5 megabyte. And by combining the other techniques uh, popular in the neural network area or academ academia, such as the distillation or the uh, uh, matrix factorization or the, uh, pruning. So there has been so many different the techniques to compress the neural network model so that you can combine those the pretty uh, well-known techniques with those the techniques so that you can even have the much, more, much smaller uh, model. And I know that one customer of TensorFlow was able to compress the model from tens of megabytes to a few megabytes, like a two or three megabytes. And they have actually uh, produced and production Android applications that learns the TensorFlow model inside it with a few megabytes. So, so that's the concept. So let's get started with the actual code lab. So if you have opened the, uh, your code lab uh, page with your laptop, basically this is a self-paced code lab. So you can start reading the code lab page and get started with your code lab. And at the same time, I want to go through the, all the, the instructions and the procedures with my laptop. So if you go to this page, you can see there's something about TensorFlow Lite, but uh, we don't use the TensorFlow Lite version for this code lab because TensorFlow Lite version is pretty new. I think this is uploaded in a few days ago and not stable yet. So I recommend not to use TensorFlow Lite yet. But if you are interested and if you have time, maybe you can try TensorFlow Lite version later. And also, this code lab uh, is, uh, suppose that you have finished the TensorFlow 4 points, but uh, you don't have to finish the TensorFlow 4 points for now. So you can get started with the TensorFlow points too, without having the, the first one finished. And the purpose of this code lab is to build an Android application with the TensorFlow model that is applied some of the optimization techniques I have explained, such as quantization and freezing. And if you go to the setup page, you need there's an instruction for installing TensorFlow. And this code lab requires TensorFlow installed on your laptop. So please go to the TensorFlow page and install your TensorFlow runtime on your laptop. I hope the, uh, many of you have succeeded on the, uh, installing TensorFlow and checked out the uh, GitHub repository for the points too. So you can go to the uh, clone the Git repository so that you can clone the points to repository to your local and change directory to the points to directory so that you can check uh, you have the TensorFlow, the models on your directories. So by executing the checkout command, you can get the train data stored on TF underscore files directory. And then you can execute the, the Python command uh, on the uh, third section, section three, to check if your model works properly. And if, you works, if it works properly, you will be getting the results such as daisy, roses, sunflowers, with those the scores. Notice that uh, you have to use the uh, GitHub to check out the uh, code from the repository. And uh, we provide the USB uh, the sticks. It has some uh, files 
for images and calls, but their tf underscore, what is that? tf underscore files directly in the USB stick doesn't have the uh, trained model. So to get the trained model, you have to get the, uh, the clone checked out from the Git repository. So you need to git clone the repository. And at that time, when you clone the repository, the tf files directory will be empty. So you have to execute the checkout command so that you'll be seeing the trained model inside tf files directory. Once you have finished the down, uh, cloned and checked out the, all the files, I think the rest of the code lab is pretty easy. Maybe I, I can go through the rest of the sections and what you would see when you go through the sections. So once you have cloned and copied, checked out the uh, TensorFlow model, uh, you can try the testing the model. And then you can start optimizing the model, complexing the model by using the techniques I have explained such as freezing the graph or the quantization. So in this code lab, we have prepared uh, some scripts to apply the optimization techniques, such as the tensorflow.python.tools.optimize for inference. And by executing these scripts, you can have the downloaded model optimized for the inference. And each section in this code lab, it is checking the uh, accuracy of the model. And it is to make sure that the accuracy from the model is not so degraded by the optimization. And also, in the last, last part of the four, section four, it is using TensorVault, which is the visualization tool of TensorFlow, to check the, uh, what's the difference between the two graphs, the original graph and the uh, optimized graph. And by looking at the uh, TensorFlow board, uh, you can see the difference of the graphs, especially in the optimized graph, because it uh, has, has been frozen by the tool. So you can see the, some variables for the weights and the biases are converted as a, a constants. And in the section five, we are trying to apply another techniques to complex the model much more. Because the original model, if you even use the ggzip command, doesn't much be complex. Only 8% of the compression ratio you would get. So this is where you may want to apply the quantization. So as I mentioned in the, uh, the concept part, I, uh, you can use the quantization techniques to compress the, uh, the weights and biases from 32 bits to 8-bit integer. And in this code wrap, you can apply the techniques by using the scripts.quantizeGraph script. And doing so, you can see you can get much, much more compression ratio, like right? 70% compression instead of the 8%. So you can see that the quantization technique is a huge part of the optimization for neural network uh, inference for prediction. And then you will uh, you'll be checking the accuracy you could get from the, uh, the quantized model. And you can check the quantized models still has the uh, pretty decent accuracy compared with the original model. In this code wrap, we expect that the accuracy difference would be less than 10%. And in section six, uh, you'll be using Android Studio 
to run the actual Android applications. The, we have provided the uh, sample Android applications in the repository. So you can just uh, open the Android Studio and open the Android project folder from this Android Studio and build the project. to run the test, test application. Uh, if you have Android device, maybe you can try use it with the USB connection. But also you can use the uh, emulator and you can use the, your laptop's camera as a camera of the emulated Android device. So this is where you have, this is the instructions you have to follow to set up the emulated Android device. And finally, you can run the, uh, the Android application that runs the TensorFlow. Uh,